Good morning. Welcome to another move sesh. <laughs> Say hi as you're jumping on and joining me. I'm inside today because it is, well, it's not raining anymore. But man, we got a storm last night. Did anybody else get like woken up by that storm? <laughs> it was insane. It was insane like yesterday evening before I went to bed. And then it actually woke me up last night. All right, so let's get started. Hey, Yvonne. All right, let's get, let's get going. Say hi as you're jumping on. Let me know how you're feeling today. So starting with some nice gentle twists, really reach, twist, or loosen up that back, loosen up those hips, loosen up that spine. Oh, it's so quiet in here. <laughs> I'm so used to being in the backyard where we get uh, all the noises, the birds, the wind, the people's machines going, people's constructions going, all that stuff. Hey, hey, good morning. Welcome to another move sesh. We're just getting started on another um, series, same-ish, different name. <laughs> renamed the same thing. Basically, I will be here live Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday as per normal, 9.15 a.m. Um, unless I have to adjust like yesterday, but every week to move myself, <laughs> myself first, and uh, I just welcome you and invite you to join me. September's an awesome month to get started again, right? Or to re-engage in kind of a routine and, and healthy habits and good habits that maybe slipped over the summer. You know, maybe um, with kids going back to school and that doesn't affect a lot of us um, necessarily. Some of you don't, your kids are older, maybe that doesn't pertain to you, but there's just a general kind of consensus of the world sort of plugging back in and getting back to kind of productivity so to speak routine and productivity and so there's just this general feeling of okay I gotta get back at it um I don't know sometimes that can feel like a bad thing right like we get used to that looser more casual life that we lead in the summer and sometimes it feels I don't know how do you feel about it do you do you feel good about getting back to you know routine and like a longer list of responsibilities meaning like you gotta get the kids to school, you gotta pick the kids up, you gotta pack lunches. Um, you know, it, does that, do you like that? Does that make you feel positive? Or are you kind of like, ugh, you know, I really liked kind of the longer casual days, the days I know some of you, you know, maybe spend the summer at the cottage or, or a trailer or camping, what have you, right? Like, does it feel like a positive thing or does it feel like a drag? To you, um, I'm I'm kind of down the middle, right? Like I feel like I'm I'm feel like I'm bipolar sometimes because <laughs> there's a part of me that's very very lazy. <laughs> like I really like to sit. I love my couch. I love to do nothing. Honestly, like I really love to do nothing. There's people. My husband can't sit. He can't really do nothing. My daughter gets really miserable. I like to do nothing. But then there's another part of me that loves to be, you know, that's type A, that loves to be really productive and, you know, go a million miles an hour and set massive goals. And so, somehow I have to balance the two personalities because um, if I don't get downtime, if I don't have the time in my day or my life to sit and do nothing, I get cranky. But if I do too much of it, I get cranky. <laughs> I'm pretty hard to please. I'm pretty high maintenance. <laughs> so we're increasing the intensity a little bit now. I like to remind you guys on every single workout because I think it's, A, it's really important, and B, I think it's something that most people never learn. Um, even people who are really fit, strong, talented athletes never 
understand the importance of a proper warm-up, meaning a warm-up is not the portion of the workout that you judge your effort level, right? A warm-up, the purpose of the warm-up is to allow your heart rate to come up gently, to allow your body to prepare itself for the workload that's coming up, right? To increase the blood flow, to increase the oxygen. And when we force that too quickly, it doesn't give your body the, the opportunity or the time to ready itself for whatever you're about to do it, <laughs> right? So if you're a runner, and let's say you run a six minute per K pace typically, you go out the door and your head, you're like, I should be running a six minute pace from the get go, but your body's not warmed up yet. Sometimes it means running a seven minute pace for the first kilometer or walking even. And then that six minute pace that you eventually end up at feels really easy, feels really natural, feels really good because you've allowed your body to ease into it. If you, um, you know, just go out the door and force it, but it doesn't feel good, right? Because your body's like reeling. It does not have the tools yet. It doesn't have the, um, the capacity yet to do what you're demanding of it. So I like to say in the warm up, you know, do let your body guide your effort. Um, the warm up should feel flowy, right? So if you're not ready to increase in intensity when I do, then do another round with low intensity. Um, if you're new, sometimes you're having an off day. Sometimes you're just tired and run down. And, you know, sometimes you haven't worked out in a while and you're just getting back to it. Whatever it is, give yourself a lot of extra grace in the warm up. The warm up is not the workout. My daughter and I had a conversation about this yesterday. She runs. Um, for McMaster University, she's a on a running scholarship, and she's she likes her warm ups like her mom. She likes to run her warm up slow. She likes to let her body ease into it. She knows she's going to be able to perform better on the actual workout, on the actual important part. And she was complaining that the team goes out super fast in the warm up and. Uh, she had a terrible workout because of it. And it's because I think, um, just in general in our society, we have a push, 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 more, you gotta do more, no pain, no gain, kind of mentality with a lot of the stuff we do. Everything has to hurt and be uncomfortable to be worthwhile. And that's not smart execution. That's just hard execution. So anyways, that was a long way of saying, uh, I want you to take the warm up, especially um, at your own pace. But having said that, I want you to take the whole workout at your own pace. My goal for you is just to show up and do your best in every, any given day. And to create a positive mindset around exercise, movement, and working out. I want you to not dread it. I want you to almost adopt like a self-care um, perspective on it versus a, oh, this is gonna hard, be hard, this is gonna suck, I'm gonna hate this. And I think one of the key pieces to doing that is to release expectations and pressure going into every single workout and it starts at the very beginning so if you go back to my videos that i made in the very beginning called six weeks of will i had to do that every single workout i had to release any stress pressure and expectations of myself because i was a far cry from where i once was I'm still a far cry from where I once was, but I'm getting there, right? And that's because I removed the pressure and the stress on myself, and the only expectation I had was I had to show up 
and I had to just do what I could do that day. And some days it looked not very impressive. <laughs> Many days it looked not very impressive. You know, some of the thoughts in my head were like, if people saw me, people who knew me saw me right now, they would be aghast. They would be like Shh, gossiping and talking about, oh, she's gained so much weight. Oh, how did she let herself go? Oh, she used to be so fit and strong. Now she's really fluffy. And, you know, we all get these stories in our head. It doesn't really matter where you're at. Um, we all kind of can get in our head. I'm opening the garage door here. With regards to what we think other people expect of us, which is usually the case is like nobody actually gives a crap about what we're doing. <laughs> to be honest, which is slightly demoralizing, but also slightly uh, a relief. Nobody cares what we do as much as we do, <laughs> or as much as we think they do. And sometimes there's freedom in honesty and vulnerability of, hey, I'm out of shape, uh, I've let myself go, I've fallen off the wagon, and it is what it is, and that's where I'm at, and so be it, right? There's, there's, a, there's a freedom and vulnerability. I'm just, I don't have my cooler in here. I'm going to use my bench today. But you can use a cooler, or a box, or a step, or a chair, or whatever. I'm going to actually use my equipment today. And you're going to need a weight, a couple weights. And I have to carry all my stuff out back today. All right. So we're going to be starting with rows. Um, we're doing upper body today. And we're going to start with our left side. So let's get into position here. Who's with me? Hey, Don. Don, Yvonne. Maybe else with me today? I miss my regs like... Corinne, I know Betty does the workout pretty much right after we do. All right, let's go. Okay, so remember, flat back, slight arch in your lower back, so your butt is cocked. Again, normally I use a cooler to do this, so don't think you need a fancy bench. All you need is a table, a chair, some kind of, you know, step of some sort. Um, anything that you can kind of lean on, just make sure that your back is nice and flat, your lower back is slightly arched, your belly button is pulled in, we got about five seconds left on this side, and you're pulling and you're not letting your arm move, you want to keep that shoulder retracted. I'm sweaty, so I ran before this, I'm going to tell you guys, this morning, was a rough morning. <laughs> I I don't know what was wrong with my head this morning. I woke up in it. So first of all, I went to bed super early last night because I've been trying to get up really early. Like I keep backing up the time. Um, it's not that early <laughs> for early morning people. It's not that early, but it's uh, I get up at five forty-five is where my alarm goes off. My new routine is I hit snooze once, I gotta work on that part. Four seconds, three, two, one. Okay, we're gonna go to halos next. So I, okay, so we're gonna alternate directions. So go one way. Now, the important thing in this one is that your head is not bobbing around. So if you have a top knot like I do that's a hot mess because I just ran in rainy muggy wet weather it's slightly awkward but anyways you want to make sure your head is not your shoulder girdle <laughs> your chest and back are rotating not your head there we go we're done that and then last, we're gonna do overhead presses. So we're gonna take our weight and we're gonna press up like so. Okay, ready? 
So I'm working towards, I think my goal is five o'clock. I'd like to get, get, I'd like to get to getting up at five. <clears throat> but I've worked my way down to 545. This was all an awesome change that came when I gave up wine. How many days has it been, you guys? Let's say the seventh. Seventh or the eighth? Seventh, I think, right? Eighth. Oh, it's the eighth today. My goodness, already. Okay, resting. That is set one. Eight. 39 days today with no alcohol. Started getting up at 545. I hit snooze once, maybe twice. I'm up and then I'm running at 7 or 7.30. This is my new routine. Which has caused me to start going to bed earlier and earlier and earlier. I am not fun. Like, I'm so not fun. We, friend, we went to a friend's house on the weekend and I was like, this to my husband at 9 o'clock. We used to stay there till midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, chatting, 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 chatting. Drinking, like not heavily, but like, you know, wine makes me awake. I find. You know, most people it causes them to go to sleep. It causes me to get tired and then wake up. Anyway, I'm not fun anymore. <laughs> I was never fun, but I suppose I could fake it if I drank a little bit of wine. I could, I could be a little bit fun. So my husband's working evenings. I don't need to be fun. I can just go to bed. So I went to bed early. Um, oh man, these are heavy today. Whew. The storm woke me up. I don't know what time it was, but holy moly. Anyone else who lives in my area, like, hear that storm? Like, just nuts. That woke me up. And then I was laying in bed this morning, so here's the cool part. I think I actually woke up before my alarm, without my alarm. But my alarm didn't go off, so I didn't know what time it was. So then I kind of started to think in my head, it must be like, I've been laying here for so long, awake, and my alarm hasn't gone off. So it's got to be the middle of the night. <laughs> Finally, I thought, I might as well get up because I'm not falling asleep. And I checked my phone and it was off. So short story long. Oh my god, these are, these are killing me today. Short story long. My phone somehow turned off in the night. I have no idea how. And so my alarm didn't go off. It was 6.30. And I was like, oh my god. And then I still had plenty of time to get out the door for my run. But you know how you're expecting to be up at a certain point and then you're not and then you feel like this panic sets in. <sighs> so that's how I started my day. And it just put me, I was grouchy. I didn't want to run this morning. <laughs> so I started to list all the excuses in my head of why I don't need to run today. This is supposed to be my off week. I've been putting in a lot of running for about five weeks now, and I have a, a gum surgery tomorrow. And so I decided that works perfectly. I'm sure I'm gonna be fine to run, but I'm gonna coincide my rest week where I drop my mileage and, you know, rest a little bit, recover. Um, I'm gonna coincide that with my gum procedure. That's, occurs tomorrow. So make sure you're lifting this weight. You want to lift it straight up and over your head. We got five seconds. Okay, resting. We have one more round like that. So of course in my head I'm thinking, okay, I don't want to run. I don't feel like running. Maybe I'll just shorten my run or skip my run. Just do my one mile, right? I have to do my one mile. This 
this is why there's magic in having those, you know, baseline minimum numbers that, like, you do no matter what. Because no matter what, I had to get out the door because I had to do at least a mile today, right? Like, but I usually run Wednesdays with my sister. So I usually run twice. So oh, I could just run once today. I'm tired. I'm grouchy. It's my rest week. All the excuses, all the excuses, right? When we don't want to do something, we start building our case in our head for ourselves, right? We start building the list of excuses. And I read this quote, or heard this quote on my podcast yesterday. I listened to a lot yesterday because I had a four hour drive. Um, okay, forget the quote, but essentially, essentially, a list of excuses is way less compelling than one. Essentially, if you don't have one really good excuse, like if you don't have one good reason why not to do something, right? So I didn't have one good reason. I had to create a list of a whole bunch of dumb reasons. They're not valid, <laughs> right? And if you have to keep, if you have to keep digging because each excuse you come up with isn't good enough, <laughs> then just do it. So I got, I said to myself, and this is my new mantra now, and it, it works, you guys, one is better than none. So I, I, you know, you can skew that a bunch of different ways. The woman that taught it to me, that I heard it from, says one minute. You know, it could be one mile, it could be one kilometer, it could be anything, but basically something is better than nothing. And so I decided, I'm going out for my run, and I'll, I'll, I don't have to do the whole thing. I did that yesterday too, actually. Oh, it works, you guys. I completed my entire run yesterday and today by telling myself I didn't have to, right? I just had to go out and start it. As long as I started it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check off that one is better than none. And inevitably, inevitably most times you're gonna finish it. But on the times that you don't finish it, hey, you didn't do nothing. And there are times, you know, like sometimes I was thinking this this morning, like how do you tell if your excuses are valid? Like. You know, overtraining is definitely something that runners deal with, or all of us deal with, right? Like, so how can you tell whether, no, I really am tired. I really should take a break today. I really should rest. I really should listen to my body. How do you tell if that's the case or if you're just being, you know, a suck? Well, Okay, so I want you to also, in these, when you notice that my biceps are nice and tight as I bring it down, right? So the weight is basically going up and down, and I want to keep my, sh my elbows forward. <sighs> Saw the clock about to change. So how do you tell the difference? That's really hard. And I was thinking that this morning because I thought, because I, I have been, I have been, I've gone from being like a total soccer and being, you know, my bipolar, the, the me that loves to sit a lot, I've really catered to her over the last couple of years. She's been my predominant personality. Prior to that, I catered to the other side, which was like, do more, do more, do more, do more, do more. So I feel like I flipped back to her. I should name them. What should their names be? <laughs> lazy me and overworker me. Like there's no middle ground. It's like either uber lazy or uber overworker. Okay, so we're gonna go to, so uh, you can do these on the floor, you can do these on a bench, or you can do them on a ball. We're gonna do presses, okay? If you 
please don't think you need a bench. Those of you who've been working out with me know that we can do these on the floor and we can also do these on a bench or on a cooler or on a ball or on anything. Okay. the difference well you can't really it's hard to tell the difference and I have been guilty of the extremes I would say on both sides of that coin so extreme lazy <laughs> extreme um, you know disengagement of doing the things that I know I need to do I'm gonna try changing my grip with these Okay, so now we're going to do alternating presses. So we're going to be up. We're going to bring one down. This is super awkward. I hope you're using dumbbells, not kettlebells. Okay, so one at a time. Can't talk during this one. I'm going to drop one of these suckers on my face. take my watch off after this. Oh my god! <laughs> oh. I have like a spidey sense for when that clock is going to go. Okay, skull crushers are next. Again, you can do all of these on the floor. So that's, that is why I employ the one is better than none. So I have spoken about this before, the 10 minute rule, go out for 10 minutes. So for you, say it's like you wake up one morning and you're like, I do not want to go do that workout with Jocelyn today. Like I'm tired, I'm grouchy, I'm sore, you know, I don't want to. And then you ask, then you start to look for the excuses. Well, maybe I need a rest day. Maybe I should take the day off. Okay, next up we're doing leg lifts. So again, do these on the floor. But if you're doing these on a bench, you don't want to be on the end of the bench. Um, what you do is you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to go show up for the workout, or the warm up. I'm just going to do the warm up, and then I can. I can turn Jocelyn off. I can just <sighs> exit Facebook and shut her up, right? So that's what you do. But inevitably, most times you're going to get through the warm up and you're going to say, ah, uh, let's see what she has planned for us today. I'll give it a try. Um, all right, we're resting. Hey, Christine. Yep, me too. I did my 10K this morning. Didn't want to, but I did it. <laughs> got myself out the door by saying I got to do 10 minutes. And then I'll see. I'll go from there. So that's the thing. If after those 10 minutes, if after warm-up, you're like, no, I really, need a, I really need a day off today, that's when you know you need the day off, right? So I have literally driven to the trailhead where I run, sat in my truck, and then driven home. <laughs> like I, I've actually done that. People are like, seriously, you're kidding me. Right? No, I, I am. I, I have literally driven 20 minutes to get to the trailhead and sat in my truck and driven right back home again because I, I, I was that adverse. So I didn't even start, I didn't even follow the 10 minute rule, which 
um, you know, that's saying something. But to me, that's indeed a sign that you, you know, your, your brain is, you need that time off. Okay, like you need that rest. So if you get through the warm up and you're like, nope, I'm not, I'm not doing it today. That's usually telltale. Most, nine times out of 10. I don't know, would you guys agree? Do you guys usually feel like you're ready to go after the warm up? Especially because in the warm up, I'm gonna tell you to take it easy if you need to, right? I'm gonna tell you to just take breaks as you need to. Oh my God, this is gonna kill me. We can do hard things, you guys. We can do hard things. The hardest part is holding these things. <sighs> Make sure your belly button's pulled in. I'm sure we're almost there. <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> oh, see, sitting by the bell. All right, spell crushers. Okay, so this is how you're gonna do spell crushers, what I'm doing right now. With your feet on the floor, if you're on the floor, you don't need a bench. I just want to keep saying that. I don't want anyone to put that on their list of excuses. Oh, I don't have a bench like Jocelyn. Okay, is anyone else's arms like absolutely jello right now? <laughs> the other thing I'll share with you guys that I was actually talking to my kids yesterday about. Um, one of the things that I think causes us to lose sort of that motivation is we forget we forget what we're working towards. We forget what our goals are. Right? We lose sight of our destination, so to speak. So I use this example with my son. Maybe I shared this story with you already, I'm not sure. We drive to Florida every March. And we all, our least favorite section of the drive. If, have, have any of you guys driven to Florida from, you know, Canada? Um, it's about a 18 to 20 hour drive from where I live. Or have you ever done long road trips, right? The worst, <coughs> the worst part of the drive is South Carolina. We all hate South Carolina. It's so long. It's so long. We're all like, we enter South Carolina, and we're like, okay, we just gotta get through this. This is the worst part of the drive. On the way down, we know when we're on the other side of South Carolina, we're like through the worst part of it. On the way home, like same thing, we're like, <coughs> I'm gonna go lighter for this last round for my bench presses. Um, same thing, we get into South Carolina, we're like, oh man. Anyway. South Carolina is the worst part of the drive. I said to my kids, imagine if you enter South Carolina and you forget that you're going to Florida, right? So you lose, you lose track of why you're driving through South Carolina. <clears throat> so all you're focused on, the minute that you forget about your destination, right? Because I am so laser focused on getting to Disney, that nothing, like it's just like pedal to the metal, don't stop, I'm in countdown mode, I know there's three different highways I gotta hit, right? Oh goodness. I'm in, like I'm in purpose driven mode where I'm like, let's get there. But imagine you forgot your destination or your goal. 
you lose sight of it. Uh, so now all you're focused on is like, holy crap, this state is taking forever. And so all of a sudden, like, you're like, I'm going to stop for a pee. And then like 20 minutes later, you're like, oh, I got to stop for a snack. And then 20 minutes later, you're like, oh, you guys, let's stop for a, a nap. Right? Because you're tired and bored. Oh my God. Holy moly. Okay, we got 10 seconds. We got this. <sighs> but you know what I'm saying? Like all of a sudden it's like, it's insufferable to do that thing. And you're just like constantly looking for excuses. What's <sighs> that feel? To stop doing that thing. Because you've lost that sight of where you're going, right? So where you're going is, kind of the, the thing that pulls you through. So what, if that comes, if that's your diet or your, your exercise, your movement goals, it's like remember where you're headed to, what you're working towards. Keep that in your vision all the time, in your mind. My son was feeling really homesick. Um, I sort of had like a little vulnerable moment where it's like, <clears throat> it would be easier to just stay home. Life was so good. Life was good, right? I'm like, well, this is true. Life was good. Because you were like, you know, you didn't really have much to do. <laughs> right? Well, that's not life. But if you remember why you're at school, you know, what your goals are in life, what you hope to get from school, then you're not focused on just the grind. If you, I'm gonna fly or something biting my arm. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> if you guys, if you forget that, if you forget where you're going, right, then it's just about the grind. But nothing's worth it anymore. You keep your eyes on where you're going. Anyway, that's my that's my goop for today. Okay, so next up we're gonna do our we're gonna do a four set. Okay. <clears throat> If you have a ball, I'm going to use the ball. If you don't have a ball, you can do these on the floor. We're going to end with a couple of Tabata sets. So our first one, we're going to do plank on the ball. All right, ready? Okay, so if you have a ball, you can be using the ball for this. If you don't have a ball, <coughs> just do plank on the floor. Okay, if you want to make this harder, pull the ball away from you. Pull your arms away from you. If you want to make it easier, pull your elbows in. Okay, so we're going to roll over on our back. We're going to do leg lifts again with the ball if you have it. If not, just regular leg lifts. So if you're using a ball, I want you to squeeze the ball with your feet. Another alternative for this is a Pilates ring, if you can get a hold of one. So this is really good for those inner thighs, your adductors, which are can be difficult to work. <clears throat> adductors can be really difficult to target, and they're going to really help with kind of strength in the core in your hips, they're gonna help with lower back issues, it's gonna help with you know, hip issues. They can be weak, A, because you know, they, they are hard to target. So 
one thing you can do too if you're using balls, you can do a little twist at the top. So using your thighs to control it, make sure that lower back is pressed into the ground. It's just a slight twist. One thing I can guarantee you is you'll almost always regret not doing a workout and you will never regret doing a workout. Even if it's the shittiest, excuse my swearing, the worst workout ever, there's almost like extra pride that you feel after getting through it. <clears throat> Actually, I heard, I heard this thing recently in my business that I thought was really interesting. When you don't feel confidence in, in what you're doing, it's impossible to feel committed. You will not commit to something that you don't feel confident in. So for example, if you don't feel confident in your workouts getting you to where you want to be, you're not going to commit to them. So how can you build confidence in what you're doing and that it's going to get you to where you want? One of the best ways to build confidence in yourself is to do what you say you're going to do. And one of the best ways to destroy your self-image and your confidence is to not do the things that you say you're going to do. So I want to shout out Yvonne for a second because I know she had a weekend of temptation, right? A weekend where she was tempted to, to not keep her commitment to herself of no alcohol for 90 days. She, but she did. Well, the action of keeping you know, are you one of those people who tell someone you'll meet them for coffee and, and you don't show up? Right? Like, if you don't commit, keep your commitments to other people, you probably don't keep your commitments to yourself. Um, it's one of the best ways to uh, build your confidence is to, you know, A, don't say you're going to do something unless you're going to do it. Right? So the, the long and short of that one is don't, like, think about what you say before you say it before you say it, so that you can, in fact, keep those commitments. Because every time you do, especially when it's something you don't want to do, you feel pretty darn good about yourself. Okay, 10 squats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. There's our squats. Oh, these push ups are going to be tough today, guys. All right, ten push ups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, let's do our glute bridges, 10 glute bridges, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay, we've done jacks, Squats, planks, push ups, four. We need to do burpees. We did glute bridges. And we need to do, let's do our burpees. What am I forgetting, you guys? One, two, three. Eight, nine, 
10. Boat. Boat is what I'm forgetting. I kind of felt like we should be able to skip boat because we did so many leg lifts. But let's not. Let's do it. Okay. Ready? Down into boat. This is it. Congratulations for showing up whether you wanted to or not today. Maybe you wanted to, maybe you didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I really, really didn't. But now I feel absolutely, you know, fantastic and so proud of myself for doing it. And it means I know I can do it next time. So, if you did want to show up today, thank you for keeping me accountable. Thank you for doing this with me. And I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be doing leg day because we didn't do it yesterday. Have an awesome afternoon. Total jello arms. Total jello.